I want to thank the UUF for this invitation, which is not the first one, because I have already talked here in the past, and uh, also uh, to recognize the tremendous uh, effort you make through the NGOs and non-profits to help the life of San Miguel. Uh, uh, the title I got for this talk, which is going to be short, possibly, uh, it's a little dramatic, you know, because it says San Miguel adrift. Adrift is a meaning in all languages, has a meaning that San Miguel is like a ship floating in the ocean with not a clear direction. Uh, at the same time, I would like, how do you make a, a speech like this and, and keep on being optimistic? Because the tendency when we talk about all these uh, problems that we have in town and the municipality is that we become very uh, pessimistic because the conditions locally and globally are now very critical. We are, I believe, in a civilizatory crisis and the change is coming, but we don't know how, where, how it's going. In the local level, and I want to reduce to San Miguel, um, let's say that uh, we can see the things first in the very basic uh, territorial, geographical, ecological realm, and then in the more social, economical, uh, which is a consequence of the first. No? I have worked a lot with, with all the people in San Miguel in the first realm, which is natural resources. We don't like to call them natural resources, because resource it, it immediately takes you to something you exploit. You, I would say natural goods or natural components of this world to which we belong. So in San Miguel, uh, with this fever of, of change that has happened in the last years, uh, apparently, it has been forgotten the real natural foundations of any kind of development. And the political class and the decision makers, they don't seem to have this awareness of the importance of the natural foundations in order to develop any kind of, of growing or development, however you want to, to call it. So, uh, the problem, we have a very specific one now, is that uh, we are ruled by, by um, development programs that are made every period. And we have had several in some years. In the past, they were not uh, usual, no? but since the 19s, they became. And the first uh, development programs they made in San Miguel, they considered that uh, certain areas should not be developed because they have a, 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 a natural importance. No? And that was in the 90s where the first plan was made. And all this part, the upper eastern uh, plateau, which is a, really a watershed, a very important watershed, because all the water coming to San Miguel comes from this eastern upper plateau, or valley, which, which has tremendous ranges around, like Picacho, Stambula, La Margara. It is very important, and, and so the, the former, the previous plans didn't, didn't consider developing that, those areas because the winds, the dominant winds from the north northeast came from there because, uh, because the aquifer was charging that area, the aquifer that gave us the drinkable water, and also because the superficial waters would run through the arroyos, through the canyons, through the brooks, and come straight to San Miguel. So it was like logical. They were not ecologists, no? But it was logical that that area should be preserved so we would have a healthy environment. But what happens in, in, in the beginning of this century? That everything changes, no? They make a new plan in which they open all those areas to development. And not only housing, but also industrial. And she, even if there were plans that uh, avoided that, they did not respect them. And they were changing slowly. Uh -huh. Now the fact is that we have a new project of uh, development plan for San Miguel and for the municipality. And, and that is even worse. Because they are opening more areas which were considered 
ecological areas to development and to any kind of uh, hotel or industrial things. No? So NGOs in San Miguel that more or less we work together, we are about six or five, five or six that are more or less in the same interest, we have been trying to, to, to influence the political class and say this is like Swiss, impossible to keep on with these plans. No? But uh, actually we haven't been successful because uh, there's a very a tendency uh, to say to reduce democracy in the participation way. You know? So we were not allowed to participate in the creation of this new program. And the consultations made legally are mandatory. Of course, they were only to let people you know, uh, say things, but they never considered any recommendations from society. I believe that all the sections of our community have the capacity and the right to participate and try to, to make a better program for San Miguel, including the foreign community. There have been so many, sometimes the, politi the political class, they want to scare the, the expats and things, and saying that they cannot participate this way, but this is not political, as the constitution forbids no, for foreigners. This is not a political item, this is not elections, and this is nothing like that. This is the policies that should be public policies that should be followed, and all parts of community should participate. So I would encourage you to do it with no fears, because there is nothing to fear. You know? And you have a vision, and you have experience, and you come from other places in which maybe the management of the natural goods are better than here. You know? Well, this is, this is the main thing. Of course, the water is one of the main issues. As you know, um, after the NAFTA, uh, uh, there was a great uh, promotion of these agricultural plantations for exportation. No? That didn't exist in the north of Guanajuato. They existed in the Bajio, down there. But not here, because we don't have water. We, it's a semi-desert area. And now they are planting thousands of acres of all these uh, green uh, crops that go straight to the United States, to the north of, northeast of the United States. And, and they are depleting the water, total 85% of the water of our municipality goes to irrigate, to water these uh, plantations, which are not food for the people here. No. It's a model of, well, this is the neoliberal model that has been imposed in Mexico no? and many other places. And so this, this is, uh, the water is, and so the, the, the drilling of the water is going down and down and down, as you may know. So we are touching the fossil uh, levels and getting arsenic and fluoride, which is very bad for human health in any time, in any kind of use of that. Anyhow, the water is a very delicate matter, no? So uh, we go from this, geographical, ecological, let's say, base, then you go to the social part and you can see the other, that this model of development for San Miguel, it's very, you see, it has been, it has not been thought for the people. It has been thought for the big business. The logics is that, well, if it's good for the big business and, and the investors come, then the people will be, uh, will receive the benefits by the spilling theory, no? <laughs> Chicago boys, no? Let's say, Milton Friedman. No? And so, like in Chile, now you see how Milton Friedman, let's say, and all the Chicago boys influence with, in those, with the Pinochet dictatorship, where they apply the perfect capitalist neoliberal system, and we are seeing now what's happening in Chile, you know. This is in the papers. No, people is not going to accept it anymore. In San Miguel, we have a terrible situation because of the 46 municipalities in Guanajuato, San Miguel de Allende is the one that has, and these are official numbers, the most inequality, so, social and economic. Uh, so this model that we have uh, done and, and followed and, and, and the political class follows it totally, 
of a big business as the, as the, you know, is not working. You know. So we we have to change that model. It's not only the territorial, the, the urban development plan that this has to be changed, but also the whole concept of development. Growing, for instance, growing is like a like a dogma, you know, like a faith dogma uh, that. That has to be grown because how much can we grow? What more capacity San Miguel has for growing in the most uh, rough sense? No? Because they say, no, it's development, it's not growing. No, it's growing. <coughs> you know? And the problem with growing is that things get big. <laughs> so, you know? and, and, and you can see the capacity of San Miguel, the water, the ecosystems, the same historical center but have not this capacity, and they keep on, and more, and more, and more promotion. And you can see what is happening. This weekend it was a very clear example of uh, something overloaded that has spilled out of the capacity for the town. No? So uh, it is, and this goes also to insecurity, because you, how can you explain this uh, epidemic of uh, security that we are living in San Miguel, if you are related to the social situation of thousands of youngsters that have no future, I mean, there is no social mobility. Inequality in San Miguel is tremendous. When I was a kid here, there was not a single luxury hotel in San Miguel. I mean, the most luxurious hotel was Posada de San Francisco or La Ermita, maybe. <laughs> And it was ridiculous, it's not a luxury. They were not luxury condos. On. All this came after the NAFTA when, uh, when all, all the economical dynamics changed. No? And so this, this uh, uh, problem of inequality and the contrast, the resentment that many sections of San Miguel population have against the rich people, what they see, Mexican or foreigners, no? that doesn't matter. It's also one important uh, reason for this insecurity we are living on. No? And also the outer problems like uh, the incapacity of the state government to manage the problem of the mafias that are fighting for <coughs> science. And San Miguel is one of them. No? And young people, I mean, with this lack of uh, family integration and this impossibility now to go work to, to the United States, no? You see, they are creating a situation that uh, repression is not going to be the way of solving. Uh, because they say, no, they put cameras and dogs and, and arms and weapons and this. And that's not a solution. No? That's, a, that's the worst of solutions. No? But that's the way our political class believes is going to control our security. No? Anyhow, it's, I'm sorry, so many items, so many issues no, that can be talked, but the vision is that really San Miguel is now in a situation in which there's no direction, no leadership, no sense of we are going to, and the only thing that is ruling it is greed and big business. And this has to be changed. But fortunately, you see all over the world, globally, and locally, and in Mexico, and in Latin America, that new, the young people, the very young people, the children. You see, media is not reporting what really is happening with these millions of children uh, demonstrating all over the world against this model, which is taking us, I don't know where. No? I mean, the destruction of the ecosystems, the extinction of species, that is a fact, it's not a, it's not a no? pollution, you see, what are we going to do with the plastic, no? Mm -hmm. When this uh, girl from Sweden, Greta Thurmond, says, what's my future? What have, what have you done to my future? We have to listen to the children, to listen to the youngsters, because they are really the ones, we are not going to change anything, maybe, but they will, and they are getting angry. And so this is, but that is, it, it makes me feel optimistic. I mean, I'm talking about terrible things, but finally I'm optimistic, no? And, and that because I can see the youngers, no? The people in the, with the Guadalupe Avenue, 
with the trees, they say they lost. No, they won. Because now that group of youngsters is really going to give another step and maybe with a better ecological culture are going to do more efficient things than saving those introduced trees in, in that avenue. No? So let's be optimistic. No? Uh, there's a marvelous book of a friend who lived here uh, I met since I was a kid. The parents were Canadians. Martin Keel, who wrote this beautiful book, which is Hope Beneath Our Feet. Mm. We have to have this hope. Be and we have to be optimistic. But to be optimistic, you have to go to the very bottom and see the reality as it is, with no fantasies, no? and to accept it. And then you can con construct your optimism. That's I, what I would love to talk about if you have more time afterwards. And uh, thank you very much.